I mean, I grew up in Philadelphia, and when I was growing up, the drummers that were playing in Philadelphia were Philly Joe Jones, Mickey Roker, Bobby Durham, Hakeem Emanuel Thompson, uh, Edgar Bateman. So just naming those five guys, I mean, it was, it was just something where as I got more and more into the Philly scene and played, got a chance to play with uh, a lot of different drummers and a lot of different bass players, I mean, I saw how all these different personalities became manifest through the music. And certain drummers had a very aggressive style, certain uh, drummers had a much more, they, they stressed the accompaniment and not really getting in the way. If we were playing with singers, they would say, adjust your playing. Um, and you know, again, you're just learning by experience. That's what I was trying to learn by osmosis, just sort of absorbing all these different influences. And of course, when you're playing with people like Mickey Roker and Philly Joe, I mean, you're, it's, you're right there listening to brilliant musicians. How can you not learn from that? I was playing in high school already with, I guess, musicians more my own age. But I started playing a lot with Ed Crockett, I don't know if you remember him, and Hakeem Emanuel Thompson, and we sort of had a trio. And then we got a gig at this place called Periwinkles, which was uh, at 19th and Sansom. Uh, but at the same time, when I started playing with Bootsy, Bootsy had a lot of those drummers that played with him. And um, at one point, I mean, I was, we were really playing a lot. So from night to night, if, if the rhythm section would change, I mean, you could see how the music would change and that certain, you know, I remember the first time I played with Edgar Bateman, it was like, wow, what is he doing? You know, he's playing in a much different style um, than somebody like Billy James, who was also a guy that was playing in Philly. And again, it was just a thing of sort of understanding that personality comes in through music, but you have to adapt and adjust when you're playing together. And how you do that, especially if you're accompanying, you know, accompanying horn players or playing with it, a bigger group or a smaller group, playing duet, all those different situations sounded different. So in a way you could make those adjustments. And, um, you know, once you start to think about that, what that means, then you start to realize, you know, you can sort of put different things out there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But through that process of trial and error, you sort of come up with a way to play. And, you know, again, it can vary night to night. Sometimes people are having a really great night and the group sounds great and then you try to get to that level and it's harder to get to it. And other times when you're not expecting, boom, you know, everybody's listening and it sounds amazing. So it's a combination of sort of striving for it but not being too, for, not forcing it. Um, but I have to say that the, the opportunity to play with especially drummers like that was really influential because it was so exciting and interesting.